Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to look at the ongoing controversy surrounding CNN contributor and Temple University professor Mark Lamont Hill, nearly a month after CNN fired him for giving a speech at the United Nations supporting Palestinian rights. So as we stand here on the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the tragic commemoration of the Nekbe, we have an opportunity to not just offer solidarity in words, but to commit to political action, <coughs> grassroots action, local action, and international action that will give us what justice requires. And that is a free Palestine from the river to the sea. Thank you for your time. That was Mark Lamont Hill speaking at the U.N. on the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian People in November. Just one day later, CNN dropped him as a commentator, after conservatives and pro-Israel groups, such as the Anti-Defamation League, condemned his comments, calling them anti-Semitic. Temple University's Board of Trustees also criticized Lamont Hill's remarks, but the university has said his speech was protected by the First Amendment and that he will remain a professor. Well, we are joined now by Mark Lamont Hill, professor of media studies and urban education at Temple University in Philadelphia, the author of several books, including including Nobody, Casualties of America's War on the Vulnerable, From Ferguson to Flint and Beyond. Um, Mark, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you talk about what you said at the United Nations at this annual event and um, the fallout from it, your firing by CNN? Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. I. Uh and I, I encourage everyone to watch uh, the full remarks. I think in a moment of sound bites and 140 or 80 characters, sometimes we can get reduced to small snippets and not get context and texture. Uh, I gave a speech uh, at the UN, and I was attempting to offer a framework of, of human rights and to use that as the lens through which to make sense of, to analyze. Uh, what was going on in the state of Israel, what was going on in the West Bank, what is going on throughout the diaspora, and to make an appeal for the plight of Palestinians, which was the, the theme of the day. Uh, throughout the speech, again, I juxtaposed particular human rights issues or particular promises uh, from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 to the realities of uh, Palestinians on the ground. And at the end of that speech, I also called for uh, a free Palestine and I use the, the, the phrase, from the river to the sea. Uh, in terms of calling for a free Palestine to the river to the sea, uh, I was specifically calling or speaking to my belief uh, that a one-state solution is the most fair, just, and workable possibility right now. Throughout the speech, uh, I talked about the need for uh, redrawing uh, the borders, the pre-67 borders. I talked about uh, full citizenship rights and full equal rights. Uh, for Palestinian citizens of Israel, what, what Israelis would call Arab citizens of Israel. And I called for other kind of uh, international uh, measures as well to respond to injustice. Uh, at no point in the speech did I call for the destruction of Israel, at no point in the speech did I call for violence against uh, Jewish brothers and sisters, any, both in Israel or around the world. That was not my content, that was not my intent, that was not the spirit of the speech. And I think, in fact, the spirit of the speech uh, contradicts what people say that I was saying. Um, of course, I never want to do harm. I never want to, to create any sense of uh, pain or fear or anxiety among anyone, but particularly uh, the people I was talking about, and, and, and I mean specifically citizens of Israel or Jews throughout the diaspora. Uh, everyone deserves to live with safety, security, self-determination, and peace. Uh, Jews are no exception to that. Uh, and so I certainly didn't mean that in the speech, but I did call for a free Palestine. Uh, and. A one-state solution for me is the way to do that. Many people responded, however, and were frustrated by that or, or said that I was somehow secretly dog-whistling for violence. Uh, I found that a bit hard to believe. But again, um, I, I'm, part of why I'm here is to talk through that. 
Uh, and, and Mark, the, the immediate response of CNN uh, uh, to, uh, to your remarks, could you talk about th their interaction with you? Also, the, the, there's a long history of solidarity between uh, African-American uh, human rights advocates here and the Palestinian movement. So this should—the uh, uh, fact that you are expressing this kind of solidarity should come as no surprise even to the people who employed you at CNN. Yeah, uh, my, my conversation with CNN was relatively brief. I, I received a phone call, and I was told that the speech didn't match their values. Uh, I pressed a bit to find out what those values were or what part of the speech didn't match uh, said values. Uh, I didn't get a, a clear answer. I didn't get an answer at all. I just the repeated refrain, this doesn't match our values, at which point we concluded the call. Uh, there wasn't, like, a long, drawn-out uh, argument. There was no antagonistic anything. They, they made a decision. And I moved on. Uh, but yes, there is absolutely a long tradition of black support uh, for Palestinians. There's a long support of black internationalism. Uh, and we, if we're going to be honest, there has been a long and deep support of African Americans uh, and blacks throughout the diaspora for the state of Israel. So we can't ignore that history either. There, there, but it's a long and complicated story. Uh, but I think in the last uh, 51 years, I would say since the, uh, the Six Day War, uh, we've seen the black left, for sure, engage in a kind of internationalism that looks for solidarity, not just in Palestine, but with movements in Africa, movements in Latin America, an attempt to really shore up a base and a community of freedom fighters that understand that inequality and injustice is not local, but it's a transnational experience. And that in order to redress any problems we have, we have to look internationally. That's what Malcolm X was attempting to do. That's what Martin King was doing toward the end of his life. That's what the Black Panthers were doing. Uh, and when we look at current movements like uh, Black Lives Matter, one of the first things uh, that I found impressive about the Black Lives Matter movement was the fact that they were looking internationally. While the president of Temple University has defended your right to free speech, the school's board of trustees has condemned your remarks. They said, quote, that speech included a statement that many regard as promoting violence, the phrase, from the river to the sea, which has been used by anti-Israel terror groups and widely perceived as language that threatens the existence of the state of Israel. Um, the members of the board of trustees of Temple University hereby state their disappointment, displeasure and disagreement with Professor Hill's comments that the statement um, from Temple. Um, Professor Mark Lamont Hill, if you could respond and talk about what happened after you were fired from CNN at Temple, what they said. Well, I think the statements from Temple have been fairly public, uh, and uh, they've been sort of uh, litigated in the press a great deal. Uh, from my perspective, Academic freedom means that we have the right to engage in uh, public discourse, uh, the right to engage, certainly, in academic discourse uh, about issues that are of great importance, uh, both long-term and short-term, both historical issues and current issues, both domestic issues and foreign issues, both popular issues and unpopular issues, and popular ideas and unpopular ideas. Uh, and so I imagine Temple University or any university in the United States as a space for academics to, to trade in ideas. And sometimes they're unpopular or controversial ideas. Uh, and I think that any attempt to uh, intimidate or threaten or undermine academic freedom uh, can set us on a very dangerous course. And that concerns me, not for me personally, and this isn't specifically about Temple University, but the broader academic climate that we see. Uh, the fact that it happened at Temple University was alarming to me. Uh, but ultimately, they made a decision not to uh, give me any penalty or any punishment, which I think was the right choice. Uh, but I think a statement of condemnation, I, I respectfully disagree with the board, but the board has its right to do what it wants to do. I, I simply disagree with it. I think that um, also uh, to send a message uh, apologizing or, or rather condemning uh, my particular remarks uh, without condemning any other remarks that have been made by any other university professor. Uh, at, the, at the school, uh, including some folk uh, very close to home who've also made controversial remarks, I think also sets a very specific uh, precedent. So again, I respectfully disagree with the university. Uh, the board, as private citizens, have their right to, to respond to my statements and to re and analyze or critique my statements, uh, and I have a right to offer mine. And I'm just going to move forward and attempt to do careful, principled, uh, and disciplined work, as I've tried to do my entire career.
And, and uh, Mark, in your, uh, in your speech, you also raised criticisms of progressives uh, in the United States for their failure uh, to speak out at times on the issues of uh, Israel and Palestine. Could you talk about that as well? Yeah, this idea of being progressive except for Palestine uh, is something that can be problematic. I think that if we uh, worry about injustice, we have to be concerned with uh, injustice across the board. It doesn't mean that everybody has to target uh, Palestine as the issue. There are many issues uh, on the board that we have to take seriously. Uh, but if you have a position on Palestine, if you have a position on, on, the, on, the, on what we call the conflict, then I think to be silent on that issue, or if, if your position on Israel-Palestine stands in such sharp contrast to all your other ideological positions, I think that's where we get a very, very uh, uh, problematic—we enter a very problematic space. If I'm interested—if I'm outraged by gentrification, if I'm outraged by the separation of families, if I'm outraged by redlining, if I'm outraged by all of these kind of domestic issues, uh, or, or even American border issues, then I can't—I have to be able to take that same outrage to every part of the world. And, again, it doesn't mean that we only uh, focus on Israel, of course. I, I, I have spent a great deal of my time, particularly when I was at Huffington Post, uh, looking at Syria, uh, looking at uh, Yemen more recently. I have written considerably about Saudi Arabia uh, because I, I am deeply concerned. Egypt uh, is complicit in Palestinian suffering as well. So. Uh, I have to look across the board, but Israel can't be an exception. Palestine can't be an exception. And too often in the progressive movement, we have folk like Hillary Clinton who will emerge and paint themselves as a progressive figure, but resist any—forgive my earpiece falling—but uh, will resist any criticism of the Israeli state. And I think that that becomes dangerous. We have to be consistent. We have to be morally and ethically consistent. I wanted to turn to the comment of Jewish Voice for Peace, who criticized CNN um, for firing you, uh, Professor Lamont Hill. Um, uh, Jewish Voice for Peace said in a statement, um, who gets to talk about Israel-Palestine? Apparently, Rick Santorum, a man who egregiously claimed there are no Palestinians in the West Bank? That's ludicrous. By firing Dr. Hill, we believe CNN is discriminating against a commentator who spoke up for Palestinian rights. They should make it right and reinstate him. Uh, before we go back to you, um, uh, Professor Hill, I wanted to bring Glenn Greenwald, the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist, um, back into this conversation. Conversation. Glenn, you wrote about Mark's firing, um, saying CNN submitted to right-wing outrage mob. Um, you respond. One of the things I found most appalling and disturbing about Mark's firing, um, aside from the fact that it was just a blatant act of censorship by a news outlet that's supposed to allow an airing of a wide range of views is that so many of the right-wing pundits and news outlets like Fox News that love to pretend to be defenders of free speech and throw a three-week-long fit if a sophomore at Oberlin boos a professor that they, that they like, said nothing about Mark Spiring, just like they refused to cover the story you covered in the first part of your show about these Israel oath resulting in people's firing. Um, that's very disappointing that so few, not just right-wing pundits, but also even centrist and mainstream Democrats were willing to speak up on Mark's behalf because of what he said, that, that there's so much um, fear about the Israel issue when it comes to mainstream liberalism. And hmm. uh, Mark Lamont Hill, you have the last word here. Um, if you can talk about what your plans are right now, and are there any behind the scenes negotiations going on right now with CNN, the possibility of you coming back? Uh, I haven't been any. Uh, I haven't been in any in any conversations uh, with CNN. Uh, my plans right now are to continue to do the work that I've been doing, which is activism, which is writing, and which is uh, scholarship. I'm open to possibilities, but the key for me is to have a space where we can have a rigorous, honest, principled, and humane discussion about everything that's on the table, with Israel Palestine being no exception. Well, Mark Lamont Hill, we want to thank you very much for being with us, professor of media studies and urban education at Temple University in Philadelphia, and Glenn Ringwald speaking to us from Brazil, um, co-founder of The Intercept. That does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! is a media job opening for full-time social media manager here in New York City. Resumes being reviewed as received, so apply online today. That does it for the show. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Berkdina Guzder, Nermin Sheikh, Carla Wills, Tammy Warrenoff, Sam Al 
Malkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masu, Trina Nadura, Tamari Astudio, and Libby Rainey. Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, our engineer. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Hugh Grant, David Prude, Aro Boone, Vesta Godars, and Carl Markser. If you want to see transcripts, podcasts, video, or audio of our show, as well as our full week's coverage from Poland from the UN Climate Summit, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks so much for joining us.